So I actually have a follow-up on the, the signals versus signs. So we said that the signs were like um, big, clear, concrete things, and they're pretty individual, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're not looking, and if it doesn't look like what you expect, you're going to go buy it. Whereas signals are more like that radio station where you know you want country, but you're not sure what song is going to be playing when you tune in. You're just going to be open to country music because mm -hmm. that's what you want to hear. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of what you talk about if we go back to the metaphor of the ball? Those signals are the ball that the universe is throwing you and you're deciding which ones you want to accept by tuning in to those signals? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. It's an exchange. Okay. Right. Right? Right. And the reason I ask that is because signal is kind of or at least it sounds kind of passive. You know, you sit there and you receive it, you sit there and you listen to the radio. But what you're talking about is actually much more active than that. The signal is just the first step. And then comes the... Yes. Yes and no. <laughs> okay, no, it's all right. Um, I, I, you know, I, I, I want it, I'm hearing your intent and the intent is yes. The language, and I'm, I don't want to be a language Nazi. Some people say I can be a language Nazi, so I really don't want to do that. I'm an English teacher. Language is important. <laughs> okay. So, you said that the signal is the first step. Okay. And, and I only hesitate on that because that's why I use the word signals, is because it's about... The signals are always there. There is a variety, there are a variety of signals out there for you, for everybody. And okay, one of the things that I think about a lot is I think about resonance the term resonance. We've all experienced resonance to some degree. Um, and and a, an obvious example that comes to mind is someone who's tuning a keyboard on a piano and they go and they hit one particular key and the light bulb fixture vibrates. Okay? So there's a resonance. There's a response. It's not a response, it's a reaction that just happens because like attracts like and so when you hit the key on the keyboard the light fixture vibrates. So there's something that is resonating, there's something that's sinking, it's coming into sync. The first step, if you want to talk about it in terms of steps, is the giving attention. It isn't actually the signal. Because the signal's everywhere. There's all different kinds of signals everywhere. The first step, if you want to talk about it in terms of steps, is what is it you're giving attention to? So when I was talking about the radio, for example, it's like, okay, am I tuning into R&B or am I turning into alternative? And the other blows past you. It doesn't really blow past you. That implies a linear relationship. That implies a directional relationship. But I talk about it in terms of linear, and I talk about it in terms of direction to simplify it. I'm not a quantum physicist, okay? I am learning right now and training with someone who's a metaphysician. The concepts... I can be a pretty deep thinker, and the concepts sometimes make my head turn to mush. When I bring forward these concepts in, in Six Acts of Receiving, I, try, I want to do it as simply as possible. I want to bring forward a metaphor, like a radio, or tossing a ball back and forth, or whatever. It's not always completely accurate, but it's close enough that someone can go, okay, 
I, I can get that. So I speak of signals like the tossing of the ball back and forth, that the universe is going to toss you a ball. And unless you're giving attention to the fact that the universe is going, are you ready? Are you ready? Because, you know, and we've all experienced a period of time where the, you know, the, we're not ready even the ball hits us in the head anyhow. <laughs> okay. But, but there is a, there is a sense of the signal, give it tuning into that signal. And then once you've tuned into that signal, instead of it being passive, and then, and I talk about this, this is an active, framework. It's an active filing system. It's an active way of engaging. It's not just passive. Because the way we're wired, the way our brain works, is we have the ability to toss the ball back. To toss the signal back. And when we toss the signal back, it's kind of like an energetic loop. It's an energetic loop. So one of the things that has been proven in science in terms of what happens in your brain is that when you think a particular thought over and over and over again, there's dendrites and the synapses on the ends of the dendrites. And then over here, there's synapses on the end of the dendrites. And what happens is there's a chemical signature that jumps from this one to this one, and then jumps back and over and back. And what happens is, is that the more that signal jumps back and forth and back and forth, it's actually been proven by, um, through biofeedback and through a number of other technologies that we have now, that those dendrites actually grow closer together. Okay, they start to grow closer together until they hit an optimum distance where this just goes tick, 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 and it's automatic. That's that place of habit. That's that place of we don't, you know, put our arms in our pant leg when we get dressed in the morning because we know how to get dressed. Whereas when we were a child, we had to think really hard about, okay, you know, my foot goes here, and this happens here, and it's a very conscious place. When we're practicing something, that's that place of conscious competence, okay? We've got to work at it. We've got to practice it. But eventually, we've practiced it enough that we just do it. We don't even think about it. And, and, and that's actually a survival mechanism. That's how we're wired as human beings. Because we want to be autonomous as quickly as humanly possible. And the quicker we can get to that place of whatever is routine being routine and being that place of unconscious competence, the sooner we can be in that place, the more it frees our minds up to be involved in other things. But it's a catch-22. It's a catch-22 because that place of routine if we don't allow ourselves to think about it, and if we don't allow ourselves to, to question it or entertain something better, something more, something different, or something new, then that routine can keep us from that new, that new signal, that new alternative to come to us because we're just focused on R&B. Does that help? It does. Okay. 